You know, you guys really like to tell me to take a break from Marvel and DC and make videos about characters from other publishers. Well, today we're going way back to talk about what many consider to be the prototypical comic book superhero, The Phantom. Wait, what? Phantom comics were published by both Marvel and DC? <sighs> I can't catch a break with you guys. Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, I'm Scott, and I'm guessing that the Phantom is probably not as much of a household name as Batman or Superman, so let me give you some quick background on the guy. The Phantom was created by Lee Falk and debuted in a newspaper comic adventure strip in 1936. Now, Falk was so dedicated to his creation that he was still writing Phantom stories even from his hospital bed up until the day he died in 1999. That's 63 years with almost 20,000 individual comic strips. That's more dedication than I will ever have. For the comic book origin of the Phantom, it's pretty straightforward and hits a lot of the same beats as your typical comic book origin. Christopher Walker and his father were sailing the African seas when they were attacked by pirates. Christopher was the only survivor of the attack and he swore an oath to never let anyone else suffer the cruelty and injustice that he felt that day, thus becoming the Phantom. But the Phantom isn't one person, it's a whole lineage of over 20 people who have passed down the Phantom title from father to son. In fact, that origin story I just told took place in the 1500s. And because this family has been carrying the title and continuing the legend for centuries, many in that world believe the Phantom to be an immortal being. And that's a pretty interesting trait considering that the Phantom on his own does not have any real superpowers. I mean, the idea is that it's just regular people who have passed down this legacy for close to 500 years. But that idea of immortality is ingrained in the mythos of the character, so much so that the character earned the nickname of the man who cannot die. Phantom comics have been printed by many publishers, including, as we alluded to earlier, both Marvel and DC, as well as Dynamite, Moonstone, Harvey Comics, and so on. He's had dozens of novels based on his exploits as well. There was a 1943 Phantom serial and a 1996 Phantom movie starring Billy Zane in a surprisingly accurate costume, though quite an epilepsy-inducing trailer. And of course, we can't talk about the Phantom without talking about his signature rings. He has a good ring that he wears on his left hand and uses to mark people whom he befriends, but it's the skull ring that grabs the most attention. It was first owned by Roman Emperor Nero and was made out of the nails that crucified Jesus. The evil mark ring has the sign of a skull on it, so when Phantom punches his enemies, it leaves a scar of that skull on them. Phantom's classic purple costume is an incredibly powerful and iconic image in my opinion, and I'm not the only one to think so. Take a look at some of these images. Do you see it? Admittedly, some are less subtle than others, but what exactly is going on here? What are we looking at? Believe it or not, these are real painted shields from the tribesmen in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. Now, New Guinea is home to over 800 different tribes, each with their own distinct languages. The culture there is ancient, but very alive, with not a lot of change happening over tens of thousands of years. And because of how remote the location is, the people of the highlands were isolated from the modern world until the Europeans entered their territory in the 19th 30s. This is around the time our story takes place, and the people we'll be talking about specifically are the Wagi. The Wagi people have a tradition of making these large, beautiful shields from trunks of trees that were smoothed, painted, and used in tribal warfare. They loved their shields. They continue today as works of ritual art. Traditionally, the shields were adorned with mostly geometric designs, typically with a circle in the center representing the sun, but in the 1940s, they started getting inspiration for their artwork from a very interesting place. During World War II, American soldiers were sent overseas to combat enemy forces. Occasionally, they would get care packages that were originally filled with extra food, but later included non-food items like blankets, medicine, tools, and comics. This was the golden age of comics, with brand new heroes like Superman, Batman, Captain America, all heavily spreading pro-American propaganda. These comics usually became standard reading material for American soldiers overseas, so it's no surprise that some of these comics would start to leak into the places where the soldiers were stationed. When American troops arrived in New Guinea to fight against the Japanese, comic books were bound to make an impact on the locals there. Out of all the superheroes who were in those comics, it wasn't the Man of Steel that stood out to the Wagi people or the Dark Knight, but rather the Phantom. 
experts say that there were a few specific things that made the character appealing to the tribe. First, the Phantom is an expert combatant who came from a long line of warriors. The Wagi deeply respected this aspect of the character since they themselves worshipped their ancestors. Secondly, the Phantom is from a jungle territory, similar to New Guinea. He also wears a mask, much like how the Wagi people wore their own masks during rituals. And lastly, but certainly not least, is his moniker as the man who cannot die. The Highland people took to the Phantom with great gusto. They incorporated his striking image into their shields, creating what some art experts are calling pop tribal, showcasing how popular culture can infiltrate even the most remote and isolated places from around the globe. For the most part, they never got rid of their geometric designs. Rather, they incorporated the Phantom into it, but typically they just superimposed him on top. And to be fair, it wasn't just the Phantom that the Wagi people were incorporating into their shield designs. They were inspired by all sorts of things like beer and cigarette brands, football teams, etc. But the Phantom seemed to trump everything else. They were so enchanted by the character that reportedly the very few Wagi who could read English read the Phantom's adventures aloud in public to everyone while displaying the pages of the comics for all to see. These were hardcore comics fans. And I think that's a fitting legacy for Lee Falk's acclaimed and influential character. The Phantom, the man who cannot die continuing to live through these incredible works of art. But I have a question for you. Which comic book character would you adopt as your own personal symbol? Put it in the comments. I'd probably say Aquaman for myself, and you can go ahead and judge me for that. The reason I wanted to make a Phantom video is to introduce you guys to the character because he will be popping up a lot on the videos over the next few months. Why, you ask? Because for the next few weeks, we'll be doing a mini-series of sorts about superhero costumes. We'll be delivering you four shorter-than-normal videos that answer questions that you guys have asked me a lot, like, why do superheroes wear capes? Why do they wear underwear on the outside? And what's up with the white eyes? And what's the appeal of spandex tights? The Phantom is at the center of a lot of these, as you can tell just by looking at his overall design. So now that you are somewhat familiar with him, you're prepared for these exciting videos coming over the rest of the month. And if you want more cool comic book history videos, one of my favorites has to be this one about whether or not Marvel's Black Panther is indeed named after the Black Panther political party. Really interesting stuff. Or you might like this one, explaining the different ages of comics. What does it mean when people say Golden Age or Silver Age? Find out by clicking right here. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSync, hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the new videos that we make for you every week that ask questions and make learning a little bit more fun, a little bit more accessible through the amazing world of comics. And once again, I'm Scott, and I'll see you right here on Friday for another video. See ya.